Hi everyone, I'm Morgan. I recently uploaded a video where I talked about how I landed a job in the games industry with no formal coding or design experience, and I realized that I didn't talk about what I actually do today as a game dev, so here is my best go at it. For those that are new here, I'm the lead product manager for a live ops game and development at Amazon Games. And as I mentioned in my last video, the term game developer can be pretty broad, right? You have like engineers, programmers, you have designers, you have um, artists, animators, all of those are considered game devs, but they do pretty different things. So I plan to chat with you about what I do. What I do is something called live operations or live ops product management. And if you're unfamiliar with the term live ops, it's pretty much just used to describe a game that acts as a live service. So it's a game that consistently comes out with like new features, updates, promotions, events, and things like that. I plan to talk you through general responsibilities, like who I work with, run you through like what a typical day could look like for me, and then what it takes to actually be a live ops product manager and the salary ranges that come with it. And if you end up liking this format and want to see this done about different types of roles in the games industry, it doesn't have to be like game depth specific roles, like maybe you're interested in the voice actors behind game characters. I can always try to bring someone on and do a video about it. Okay, let's talk about live operations product management and what that actually means. I'd first like to start off with a disclaimer because when I'm talking about live ops product managers and you know what, I'm just going to refer to them as PMs to make it easier on me for the rest of the video. When I'm talking about live ops PMs, like keep in mind the roles and responsibilities could be slightly different depending on the company, the game, the team. This is just how I would describe the responsibilities based off of my own personal experiences as well as some of the experiences from my friends who are also within product management. Oh, and also please keep in mind when I'm talking about PMs, I'm talking about live operations product managers. I'm not referring to technical product managers. Their roles and responsibilities are slightly different and I'm not talking about traditional product management, which is really, really common in the tech space. Uh, the games industry has them as well, and there are a lot of similarities between us, but there are also quite some differences. I'm not gonna go into detail in this video on what those differences are, but an example of that is that live ops PMs often need a skill set in design, usually at least around like systems or monetization design. So when you think of mobile or other live ops studios, traditionally PM orgs are responsible for several things, acquisition, onboarding, engagement, retention, and monetization, and all of the business goals that surround that. And when I mean business goals, I don't just mean like oh, how much money the game has to make, but around defining key product indicators, such as reaching a certain amount of monthly active users. Acquisition usually refers to the methods in which you bring a new player into the game. And most like large studios and games actually have marketing that handle this. Onboarding refers to how you introduce a new player into a game. So you can think of things like tutorials or daily tasks that a new player has to do in their first seven days. Engagement refers to creating ways for players to play more, while retention refers to figuring out ways of stopping players from leaving and like never coming back. And lastly, monetization is about designing ways for the game to make money. And pause there because I am going to come back on that specific topic because it is a little bit controversial. Generally, the types of tasks or projects that covers like all of those areas of focus I just mentioned can really differ depending on, again, your game and your team. I mean, it can range from designing monetization systems. So when you think of like features like a battle pass or a loot box system, or when you think of like economy design, those are things that kind of fit into that bucket. To evaluating and guiding data analysis, you need to think about what data do you need in order to make smart decisions and know that what you're doing is working or not working. To roadmap architecture and design, where you think about what features need to be built and how you prioritize them. Really large games will often have teams of PMs and sometimes PMs are actually dedicated to like a certain feature. So like a PM could be on a seasons and events team and they determine and design what a season or event looks like for players. They would determine things like what content should be included and for how long and you know what type of tasks need to be done, how many points do you accrue for different tasks, how are different types of content actually going to be distributed to you, and then obviously also defining 
whether that event or season was successful. Usually when a game is earlier on in development, a PM like myself would focus on defining the strategy and then designing the systems that support that strategy. Because of my own personal unique specialty and like where my game is in development, I'm thinking about what monetization systems could be built. I do want to pause here because whenever I do mention monetization, a lot of people are like, and honestly, understandably so. lots of predatory monetization systems out there like pvp games where you have to like pay for power in order just to be competitive or you have tons of games with the gotcha mechanic where you like basically gamble and spend hundreds of dollars and you get shit. like that feels really bad so yes a portion of a pm's role is to make sure that money is being made for the game but i am super super adamant about the belief that good pms maximize revenue by actually maximizing engagement and retention. Like healthy monetization systems should be built in a way that also encourage players to play more and enjoy playing and only spend because they want to, not because they have to. There are honestly lots of ways to go about this and design a system that just doesn't feel really shitty, you know? Okay, I'm gonna stop there because honestly, I can go on a long tangent about this, but let me go back to talking about what PMs do. What I really like about this role is that I also get to collaborate with a lot of people. I'm a very social person, and so that was something that I found to be really enjoyable about this job. Like most often, we're teamed up with the producers and the designers. So I work with the executive producer, the product director, the creative director, and I touch base with like lots of other types of folks. Our insights friends, our engineers, legal. Honestly, the list is pretty large. What does a typical day look like for me? This is gonna feel like a cop-out answer because every day can be pretty different. What I'll do is I'll actually just run you through a day that I had last week. Also, I can't go into specifics about what I'm doing during the day because the game that I'm working on hasn't been officially announced yet and your girl is not trying to get fired. Okay, so most of my days are comprised of at least a few meetings, but my Thursdays, like this one, are usually the busiest. I usually start working around 9 or 9.30, kind of doing that initial checking emails, responding to Slack messages that I missed, and I was still doing a lot of onboarding because I had recently joined that team. My first meeting was at 10, which is a sync with all of the game team leads. This is where each lead basically gives an update on, you know, what they're working on, the status of their work, any blockers that they might have, and then following that is a meeting meeting with the entire studio, where the studio head will usually kind of give any big updates about what's going on that everybody needs to know about, or teams will share some of the cool work they've been doing, like those that are creating new character designs, or a team that's building a new tool so that we can build assets more efficiently. And then Amazon Game usually has these org-wide place tests that they have once a month, and it just happened to land on that Thursday. What game is being tested can honestly vary, and it's usually on a specific feature, but it's a really good, quick, low-cost way to get feedback from internal folks. After lunch, I had like four one-on-one -on -one meetings back to back. The first one was with a PM on Lost Ark because there are definitely learnings that I could take and then apply to my game. And then in, in the second one, I was actually giving feedback on a design doc, but this was for another game, not my title. The third was with one of the creative directors where I then shared some of my work, I got feedback off of that and then made sure to implement it. And then the last one is with the actual studio head. We usually use like the beginning to just catch up and then we'll have discussions around what are the different problems that that we're facing and just like our general thoughts around it. Honestly, days like this, like I'm I'm drained and it's like hard for me to context switch again and like do a lot of mental work afterwards. So I'll actually usually just like end the day playing some video games. And you know what? It's research. Okay, so maybe you're like, wow, this is some pretty interesting stuff. I'd like to learn more about it as a career. Or maybe you're like, no, this shit sounds boring. Like the, wait. Can I, uh, curse on a YouTube video? Actually, I th actually, I think I cursed before. I'm just gonna bleep it out, just to be safe. Yeah, but yeah, if you're the latter, thank you for watching, and I hope this gave you a good understanding of what I do. For everyone else, girl, I do not gatekeep. Let me talk about what it takes to be a PM, as, you know, as well as some of the salary ranges. 
Okay, I'm going to be honest, getting into live ops product management is definitely known to be pretty difficult because it's quite competitive. And a lot of times you actually need to have experience first within the games industry before even breaking in. Obviously, every company is going to be a little bit different, but in general, during the interview process, candidates are tested for skills related to traditional product execution, psychology, economics, statistics, analytics, systems design, monetization design, and obviously like having really good soft skills. And I would say it's pretty critical for a PM to be able to break away from their own perspective to understand like the underlying motivations behind a player behavior. What's been pretty interesting to me is that I've seen PMs come from a variety of different backgrounds. I have PM friends that came from consulting, rose through esports, or even came from QA. What I think is similar is that we've all had a couple years or more in the games industry already and kind of built up those foundational skill sets that I'd mentioned. Different PMs also tend to have different specialties or they'll tend to spike harder in their expertise in certain skills than others. I have PM friends who have great experiences bringing an Eastern game to a Western market, that's something that I don't have, and then ones that are like super knowledgeable about complex economies. Okay, so now let's talk salary ranges. And I'll be fully honest, I'm super hesitant to talk about my specific salary. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm like federally protected when it comes to talking about salaries. I don't want to put myself at risk. So let's use a couple of resources that rely on anonymity to get salary ranges. Like with any other job, salary ranges are highly dependent on multiple factors, including company, job level, and location. Another reason live ops product management is highly sought after is because it tends to pay pretty well. Now, jobs in gaming overall do tend to get paid less compared to our traditional tech friends, but it's pretty safe to say that PMs in a mid to large company usually break six figures. Levels.fyi can be a good resource where you can look at specific companies and see how much people make based off their job level and years of experience. Keep in mind here that with resources like Levels or Glassdoor where salaries are crowdsourced, PMs of all types will be included in this. So this doesn't just cover live ops PMs, but also technical PMs who usually have like a higher salary range as well as traditional PM roles. Glassdoor is another good resource where you can find the national average across common levels. And just like with levels.fyi, you can search up individual companies and see the average total compensation. Okay, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to stay in tune with my life and see more videos, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. And feel free to follow my TikToks and Instagram for more of my day-to-day -day stuff. Also, again, I was thinking about making this into a kind of series where you, like, where we can learn about other roles in the games industry, so if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. Bye!